What's going on guys and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you guys how to mask with the Rotobrush tool, which I think in certain times can be a lot faster than using the pen tool. Um, so it's pretty self-explanatory there. I'll go ahead and show you uh, my method and how I use Rotobrush and um, hopefully it helps you guys out too. So the first thing you're going to do when you're uh, Rotobrushing is make sure you pick a scene where the object or character that you want to roto mask out is different enough from your background that AE will be able to notice the edges um, that the character has. So like for example, see these hair strands aren't too skinny. This, gets, this one gets pretty skinny here, but we should still be able to get it. Um, and throughout these frames, the motion isn't too crazy where Rotobrush which should do a pretty good job of tracking this, these colors and um, masking out the parts you actually want masked out. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and go to the very beginning of our clip and select it and then hit Alt W and that will select our pen tool there. And then once your layer is selected, you're at the beginning and you have pen, pen tool on, then you want to double click your layer like that and it'll go into our layer mode here. And now that you have the tool selected, you should be ready to start painting the objects that you do want and the objects that you do, don't want. So in order to tell AE what you do want, you want to left click your mouse and you'll see it paint a green line. So let's do that. And you see it starts to paint a green line wherever you're, you're clicking and holding. See, I'm just clicking and holding and painting the things I do want. So I'm just gonna scribble all over, do that, right? So I want all this, I want this, all this here. Okay, and we notice that right now it has cut out all of this right here. So now we need to go in, let me get that right there. Okay, so now we need to go into these, this area here and get rid of that. So what we need to do is scroll in and alt click to subtract things you don't want into the scene. So when you alt click and paint, Rudder Brush goes, oh, okay, you don't want that. So it starts to assume the next where the object um, actually is. So it's saying, okay, you don't want these dark colors. Let me just cut this whole part out. So you have to tell it, no, I want this too. You see that? And now it's like, okay, and it's just making more assumptions. So basically what you, to, what you have to do is keep on telling AE more information. By when I say AE, I mean After Effects, if you guys, those of you guys that are newer, um, Basically, keep telling After Effects, like be as precise as you can, what you do and don't want to the scene. So like this strand of hair, it's really skinny, so you can just zoom in and keep on painting on it. And eventually, Rudder Brush will understand what you're telling it. Okay. So I'm gonna continue to just keep on telling After Effects that I do want this red hair, I don't want this green background. Okay, I'm going as much much detail as it takes for it to understand what I do and don't want in this scene. So you can already see that this doesn't look too bad. Um, you can do you can do more detail if you want, but I'm just going to move on from here. So in order to to continue doing the rest of the scene, what you do is just go to the next frame. And what I do, I press uh, page down, and that goes one frame over, and there's no change. So then I press page down one more time and then keep going until there's a change. You see that Roto made a wrong assumption there. So I had to go in and say, no, Roto Brush, I want this in the scene still. And it can be painstaking depending on the scene, but the nice part is, is that the further you go, the better Roto Brush understands what you do want in the scene. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and time lapse myself doing the rest of this. It's pretty self explanatory. Um, I guess the last thing I'll say before I do the time lapse is the uh, paint brush size you can change. I just keep it pretty small, but if you want to change the paint brush size, you can hold control and then click, and you can see the, the size of the paint brush get bigger or smaller, depending which way you drag your mouse. So control click and drag your mouse, and you can see it changing size. I usually keep it like as small as possible, almost like about there. Oh, now I'll make it smaller. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really all there is to it. Um, just make sure you pick a good scene and um, listen to some good music while you're doing it and you should be golden. Oh, oh, oh.
Okay, so now it looks like I've got every single uh, frame masked out. Um, kind of roughly done, but um, just a tutorial, so I thought I'd just leave it where it's at. Um, if you guys are kind of following along with a uh, scene of your own and you notice that the edges are looking kind of, you know, jagged, not, you know, clean as you like, I'm going to show you how to adjust that right here. Um, so go ahead and exit out uh, once you're done, by the way, once you're done with all of your of your frames, go ahead and exit out of this um, layer panel. And then um, you see these um, settings over here in our Rotobus effect settings. We can basically adjust those numbers. So let's zoom in here on these edges so you can see. Um, so this one's pretty obvious. The feathers is going to make the edges a little bit more smooth, but you don't want to turn up that up too high because watch what happens. See, some things will start to disappear and it gets cloudy, I guess you would put it. But um, what I normally do is shift the edge because this this is usually what will make things look smoother and the contrast number as well. So I'm gonna shift the edge outwards just a little bit. I guess it's all the way 100% for this scene. So 100% works well for what I just did. Um, and then maybe the feather up just a touch, 7.5, see that? So now it's smooth and it looks pretty darn good actually. Um, when I was going frame by frame and I was zoomed in like that, it didn't look that great, but now it looks almost perfect. And that took me what, like, 15 minutes if that long um but yeah uh, i'll go ahead and show you how i did this background right here um, it's pretty simple i just added a solid control y to add a solid and i'll add the same color why not uh, put that in the bottom layer and then i added a vignette yet i used bcc vignette and just threw it on there but yeah um that's pretty much it for Rotobrush. Oh, I know what I what else I did. Um, I added a drop shadow as well. I do that a lot when I mask. Um, is add drop shadows. Um, this is a Sapphire plugin for a drop shadow. Uh, add that. Then I change the X to zero, Y to zero, um, the color to white, and three. 3.6 opacity whatever yeah so it adds like a white barrier that looks a little too thick but yeah you get the idea um that's how i use roto brush i hope it helps you guys out too um it was kind of a game changer for me kind of opened a lot of doors for different scenes that i didn't feel like using the pen tool pen tool for so uh leave a like down below if you guys enjoyed and subscribe if you really enjoyed because i'm going to be doing tutorials almost weekly now um, but yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.